Hi, and welcome to the square foot estimator demonstration. Step by step, we'll walk through the process of using the square foot estimator, where you'll start by choosing your settings, your release date, your location factor, things like that. And then you'll dive in and choose your building type and your exterior wall type and structural system. Then you'll choose some parameters as far as how big the building is, how many stories, the story height, and then some percentages for costs as well. Then you'll take a quick look at the quick view, very important piece of this, and decide if you need to add any additives. After which you'll create a report and decide if you need to customize the report or not. And from the report, you'll be able to print as a PDF or export that report out to Excel. Here I am on the square foot estimator of RS Means Online. And the first thing I see is this row of tools at the top and good design. That row of tools is repeated at the bottom. Just to make sure no matter where you are, you have access to saving, customizing, calculating, things like that. First thing we'll point out here is that this area of the screen is a summary as you go through and select your building type, change the makeup of that building, you'll see the prices change and you'll see an update to the building type. I start with the estimate header information. So I'm going to build a new building today. I'm going to call it, uh, let's do a Boston, let's do an office building. All right. And then I want to make sure my settings are good. New construction, union wages, 2017 data, perfect. And my location factor would be Boston, Massachusetts. I can choose any location that I'm working on. This is also a great way to compare different location factors, different releases, things like that. Then I would scroll down and take a look at the building types. And from here, I'm going to choose a building type. Obviously, I'm going to go find an office building. Let's start with an 11 to 20 story office building. And then I need to choose my exterior wall type and structural system. And you'll see a number of options here. Now, there isn't a default here. They're listed alphabetically. I'm going to go with a curtain wall, rigid steel. This is also another great way to do a comparative. You could change these out and see what costs what and what kind of comparisons you can create. I'm going to choose that curtain wall, rigid steel, and then I'll come down to the building parameters in step two. Step two, probably the more important one when it comes to ranges. So here we're looking at the area as far as square footage goes. And I want to stay within that area. So let's just make this instead of 260,000, let's make it 750,000, shall we? And then you'll see I'm still within that size range. Clicking away will update the perimeter. And then I can say I want it to be 18 stories and I want it to be a 12 foot story height. I've got contractor, architectural, and user fees that I can add in here if I want to. And I can include a basement. And then I scroll down and I see these additives. Now I look at this optional as a flag for me to remember that I want to first of all, calculate my building costs. Makes sense. I can save this now, just so I make sure I'm saving as I go. All right, system has a very nice auto save. Just make sure you save anything you're working on. And then I can always go back up and take a look at what we have here. I've got $125.6 million here that I'm looking at in Boston for this particular building. Note that I can actually upload my own image instead of just the RS Means image if I wanted to do that. I scroll back down. So once I've calculated and saved, I'm going to click the quick view. I can do this anytime I want. And it's simply going to list out the assemblies that make up this square foot model. So this is not editable in any way. It's just a way for you to scrutinize what's in the building at this point. I can scroll down and I can see the makeup of the building from the substructure, slab on grade and such, and then the shell, the roof construction, the exterior doors and windows. I can look at the interior doors and windows, all of the finishes in the stair construction, and then I run into the D services section. Very important to realize you can actually see the percentage of the cost for the entire building. So this is about 47% of the entire cost of the building is just the services, which makes sense. You're looking at your mechanical, electrical, HVAC. You're looking at all your communications, all of your fire protection, all of those types of things. When I've looked at this and said, okay, well, let's check out the list of additives now and see if there's anything I would want to add from that list of additives that isn't already in the building. I would click on this optional list of additives and maybe I want to put in a few of these directory boards. 
one for each entrance, one for each side. Maybe I want to go down and put in some metal detections. Maybe I want to put in some metal detectors, maybe a walk through portal type metal detector, maybe a couple of those. Okay. And then at any time I can click show selected. It'll show me just the ones I've selected. And then again, I can save, I can recalculate as I go along. Okay. I can take a look and I can see the cost of my building $125.7 million. And then at any time I can click on customize slash view report. So the first thing I'm going to do is view the report. And what this really comes down to is seeing the summary again at the top and then seeing that quick view just exploded out. So I see all of those assemblies again and I see the cost, the total per square foot, that type of thing. The important thing here is that I can look at these things and now I can actually customize this building, this model to make it what I'm actually building. When we talk about customization, we can add an assembly directly from the assembly database into my square foot model. I can even swap one out. So let's say that the uh, four inch thick slab on grade isn't what I need. I needed five inch thick. I needed it reinforced instead of non-reinforced, that type of thing. I can swap those out and I can remove an assembly. Maybe I didn't need certain interior doors or whatever it might be. The notes include an audit trail. So this is automatically created once I make any of those changes. It's automatically done in the notes to say who swapped what for what on what date, that type of thing. Let's take a look at customization. So from here, I can go down, I'll use that exact example. I'll choose four inch thick non-industrial reinforced and I'll swap. And whatever you choose from the list is where these tools, the functionalities of adding, swapping and removing are gonna start when it comes to being in the database. So I'll click swap assembly. It's gonna bring me to that four inch thick non-industrial. And I can actually say, you know, I really needed five inch thick heavy industrial. And I can choose that. And then I can say confirm. Now, this is the really nice part of it as well as being able to say, well, I don't, it's not a true swap. You, you could actually say 70, 30 or 50, 50. You can actually keep that four inch thick if you needed to. In this case, I'm going to say, yes, swap these assemblies at hundred percent. I'm going to get rid of the four inch thick and I'm going to add in the five inch thick. And you can actually see it there in green and it recalculates for you. At any time, I can go back to my square foot estimator, but from here, I can export out to Excel or I can print this. I'll go back to the square foot estimator, make sure I save this. And once again, I have the ability to export to Excel or print as a PDF. Thanks.